Hi guys, this is Steve Darcy with Go Engineer, and today I came across a nice little truss from one of our customers and thought I'd share it. So it's got a lot of nice little cuts, a lot of trim and extends, uh, some large components with some smaller components in the middle. Uh, everything is nice and symmetric, but one little weird thing. The top is actually a little bit uh, larger than the bottom, or vice versa, but let's check this out. And not only that, we're also going to do a little bit of drawing. But like I always do, let's start from scratch. So I've got a part file. I'm just going to start sketching on the front plane. And I'm just going to sketch this thing out, just kind of get it close to what I think it is. And I'm going to exaggerate uh, the top of it just a little bit. And let's just keep going. We need to make this uh, symmetric. So I'm going to go ahead and pull this one down, find the midpoint there. Go ahead and put one more in there. Looks pretty good. We'll add a reference. I'm going to hold down control, select on the origin. We'll do a midpoint relationship. Uh, let's go ahead and put some dimensions on this. So this guy is supposed to be pretty good size, so we'll just put him at about 160. And let's put the top at about 170. Something like that. Distance between the two are 48. Starting to look a little bit weird, a little bit wonky. So uh, we need to make sure that these are, are, sh are straightened out and they are supposed to be symmetrical. So I'm going to come in here, find the midpoint, hold control, pick on the origin, and again, we'll make that vertical. So now that centers those up. Next, I'll just make these two equal. Make these two on the outside equal. And that looks pretty close. Let's see what else we're missing. Oh, I just need to probably make these two equal. Probably could have selected all of them, done them all equal at the same time. All right, so now everything's black. It's nice and fully confined. Let's go ahead and finish out of the sketch. Uh, if you don't have your weld mitts toolbar up, you can right click on your ribbon and turn on your weld mitts. Uh, everybody that's SOLIDWORKS has weld mitts. Uh, let's go into a structural member. And I have my ANSI configurations on. We're going to use just some square tube. And let's start off with the big pieces on the top and the bottom. Those are going to be, uh, let's do some 4 by 4 by quarter. So I'm just going to select on that component. That looks pretty good. I want to go ahead and use these as the center lines. So that way when they come together, uh, that's going to be my vertice on where those come together. So I'm going to use that guy and this guy at the same time. Looks pretty good. All the other components are a little bit smaller. So I'm going to go ahead and finish out of that feature. Go back into structural member. I'm going to select on this guy. This is going to be a little bit smaller. We'll go with a three by three by quarter. Looks pretty good. And I'm going to keep on using all of these. And I could do that, or I could just do half. Because I got quite a few trimming and extending to do. So let's go ahead and uh, turn those guys off. We'll just do half and then we'll figure it out on the, on the other side. Now I do have to kind of take a look at uh, how these things are trimming up. In this case I don't want it to do a miter on that. So I'm going to flip the little option there. And I do want this to come down into that intersection, which is fine. And I actually get one trimmed off piece on this guy right here. Uh, these, I'm pretty much going to, um, I can actually miter these. So we'll flip that, miter it. And this one I'm going to have to trim off on a plane and on the bottom, so we'll leave him alone. So it looks pretty good. We'll go ahead and say OK. So a couple things we need to do. Uh, let's go ahead and trim off of the bottom first. You'll notice that, and a lot of times I'll try and select on some of these faces to see if they go through them, see if I can trim them off or not. And uh, sometimes I work with one, sometimes I work with two. just kind of depends on how, how I'm set. For the most part, all these guys need to trim off on the top and the bottom. So let's start with that. So I'm going to do trim and extend. I'll go ahead and select on all of these bodies. I'm going to go to a face, select on this. And when I do, I get all these little icons for uh, keeping or removing. Uh, typically, I select all my faces first before I do that. 
So I'm going to pick on this face too. But something happens on this is when I select that face, notice the name of the command is called trim and extend. So what's happening is it's going to trim in some instances and then automatically extend in others. So in this case, it starts trimming this, which is perfect. But now it's also extended this, which is kind of the cut that I already had on there. Uh, to keep that from happening, there's a little checkbox here that says allow extension. So I'm going to turn that off. And so then that way I get this little intersection and it doesn't automatically extend that out. So it's looking pretty good. Uh, I think that will pretty much do it. We'll take a look at these guys. I typically do try and move them to where they make some sense. I want to keep all these guys on the inside. All the ones on the outside, I'm going to get rid of. So I just click on that guy. Click, click. Uh, discard, discard and discard and we'll hit OK and then always double check let's make sure that these look correct that looks alright it's trimming off on that these two trimmed off together that face stops that looks good he looks alright uh, down in the corner that one looks good and then I do need to extend these parts on out uh, as well uh, but I don't have them on the other side, so I'll do them pretty much last. Um, I do have one more little concern. Uh, that's right here. Um, I can trim that one off by using the plane. So I use the right side plane. We'll just do uh, trim extend. The body I want to trim is going to be this guy. Uh, I'm going to uncheck the allow extension. That way I keep that. And notice I've got two little sections there. I want to go ahead and discard that and keep that guy. So that should be pretty good. I've got a little trim, trimmed piece there. Looks good. And I think that'll pretty much do it. So uh, next, pretty simple, all I gotta do is do the mirror command. Go ahead and use that same right side plane. And let's do bodies to mirror, of course, since we're on weldments. Now I get all my components on the inside from what's on left on right. And now we'll just do trim and extend again. This time, the bodies to be extended are going to be these two. And I'm going to use a face or plane. And I want to go to this face. So notice it's also creating that as a cut. Uh, not straight 90 degrees. It's going to be kind of at an angle. Uh, same on the bottom. And I want to do, I can, cool thing is I can do two things at the same time. I can do both at the same time on that. So that looks pretty good. I'm happy with that. We'll go ahead and say OK. And of course, SolidWorks puts all the cuts list items together. So I have a top component, a bottom component, uh, two on the outside, and then some of these guys on the inside. I have different cuts, so they're of course gonna be different. And we can't give individual solid bodies properties. So what SolidWorks does is it puts them in these little weldment folders here. So looks pretty good. Uh, if you wanna give it extra properties, say for instance on the properties here, I can go ahead and add in maybe a uh, part number. I'm just going to make something up. If you have stock numbers, uh, you can put those in as well. And again, it's properties of these little folders. So if you look at the little cuts table, we can add a new table template and add that, that row in there. I'll go ahead and add it at the uh, when we do the drawing, though. So I'm going to go ahead and say OK. And let's save this guy out. And we'll just put them in the weldment folder and I'll just call them weldment truss. Sounds good. Save it out. Let's go ahead and create a drawing from it. So hit the little drop down, say make drawing from part or assembly. And I'm just going to create a uh, B size, so 11 by 17 landscape is good. And we'll drag and drop some views in. Top view. Put a little isometric. If you hold down control, you can drag that around. Uh, and I'll just right click to finish out of that command for uh, the views. If I want these to be a little bit smaller, uh, they are set right now with a sheet scale. I'm going to go ahead and make them uh, 1 to 50. Shrink them down just a little bit. I could, of course, do a custom scale. might give me a little bit more room. Um, but in this one, I'm going to go ahead and create a weldment cuts list. 
I'm just going to accept the default and plop that guy up there. So that looks pretty good. Uh, you can, of course, rearrange this a little bit. If I want to find out which items this thing goes to, then we can do auto balloon. And let's go ahead and put everything on the top. We have a little magnet line, so if you want to drag that around or put them at an angle, we can. Some of those line up a little bit weird, so that looks good. Happy with that. And now you can kind of see that some of these uh, are at different angles. Uh, let's go ahead and grab some model dimensions. We'll just say entire model. Uh, occasionally when it does that, it will pull in some of the dimensions from the, uh, from the uh, uh, features themselves. So I'll erase some of those. And th these are the main model dimensions that I wanted right here. And that looks pretty good. All right. And some of these have different angles. So I want to find out what are the angles that I need to cut those on. And we can add to our weldments cuts list. So I'm going to right click on that and just insert a column to the right. We'll go ahead and put in two more. And then on column E, just select that, tell it that it's a cuts list item property. And I want to get tell it to get angle one. Then we'll go to F and we'll go tell it to get angle two. So the overall length is very much end to end on these components. And then these are the angles. This is pretty much the angle that came out. And this is how we have to cut them. And same thing on this item number three, I have to cut him also at this almost six degrees and six degrees. Now I can change my units and make it go up to six degrees. 5.95 would be a little bit crazy. Uh, but you get the point. Now the other thing I want to do, I'm going to go on G right here. And I'm um, to cuts list item, and I want to go grab part number. Remember, I made that one part number in there. So we can actually have access to any of the different properties that we put at the, the part level and have it automatically do it here uh, in the drawing. So the other thing you may want to do is if you did customize your table, your Weldments Cuts List, you may want to right click on this guy, save it out as a table template. And then once you save it as a table template, then, of course, when you insert your weldment cuts list, you can select it. Here, I'll just pick it right here. Uh, you'll be able to select it before you insert it. All right, but let's do some detailing. So I'm going to use this view. I'm just going to copy it, Control-C, and let's create a new view or a new uh, sheet here. And I'm just going to Control-V, paste that thing. And then I want to do a detail of some of these little components like this number three right here. So on my view layout tab, I've created a little button here called relative view. If you don't have that on there, hit the little drop down. Make sure you're looking for searching for commands. Just type in relative and just drag and drop that guy on there. And once you drop it on there, then of course he'll, he'll be on there for good. Uh, didn't really mean to put two out there, so we'll just drag that in our customize and get rid of them. All right, so I have a relative view. What the heck is relative view? Uh, I like to pre-select the view and then hit relative view. Then it knows to open up this part file. It allows me to just make a individual uh, pretty much part have its own view. Now when I select that part, I also need to select the orientation that I want to see it in. So in this case, the front view is going to be this front face and maybe the top view or orientation is going to be this top face. So kind of what's going to happen is I'm going to look at it in this view in the front and then this face is going to be towards the top. So when I hit OK, now notice I only get that one component. Once I have him there, then I can do some projected views. I'm going to do a little isometric. And those are pretty much the only two views that I need. Um, I may want to uh, increase the scale of this guy. So right now it's on user to find. Let's go and crank that down to about, let's go to 12. That looks pretty good. Drag that out a little bit. And then of course we can start putting some dimensions on this if we need to. Maybe 
maybe that's better to mention. That looks good. And then, of course, finish detailing this thing out. All right, and I'll just leave it at that. Now, the cool thing is this is coming from that weldment. So if I do a balloon on it, then it's going to grab that number three on there. And I could do other things like this if I want to do a, a split line. Of course, I should have done it before I selected it. So we'll do a split line. And the split line tells me what item number it is and how many of those things I need. So that's pretty cool. I like it. It looks pretty good. Uh, next, I want to do another one. So same thing. I'll pre-select on that. Let's go to our relative view. This time, I want to do one of the big components here. So I'll pick on select bodies. I'll just do this big one. And front view is still going to be the same, but I'm going to change this top to be this guy right here. We'll go ahead and say OK. Puts him out there. Uh, he's pretty big and long, and we've got a lot of cross-section that's really not doing much of anything. Let me go ahead and create uh, my view. Yeah, let's go ahead and create the views. We'll do a projected view. Nice and metric. Drag that on down. And then here, I'm going to go ahead and uh, change the scale. Again, 12 looked pretty good. But now it doesn't really fit, so I'm going to go ahead and do a break view. And I keep picking on the wrong thing. Give me a second. Let me move this guy out of the way. There we go. We'll do a break view. Squishes him up. That's looking pretty good. All right, and on this, of course, we can't really do the break view unless we do some kind of tricky thing with a configuration at the part level. Uh, so typically what I do is make this guy have a custom scale and we'll shrink him down. See what 40 times looks like. That's good enough, it fits on there. And then same thing, I could do a balloon Go ahead and tell it it's split. Select on that. And then I've got some detailing out to do, uh, of course, on this guy. I don't have to worry about the, uh, the lines and stuff like that. The dimensions automatically put the little brake symbol on there. And we're good to go on that. Need some angle dimensions on there. Uh, a lot of times on weld mitts, I do see a couple companies do some little outlines like this. As long as you make them look good, it should be okay. Of course, I'd want to perfect it and put some dimensions in there possibly to make sure that they, they look good. But uh, pretty much just make sure that all the details are kind of in one specific area for that. So you can replicate this multiple times. Main thing is just make sure you use relative view. And then you don't have to save all this stuff out as individual parts and things like that. And everything will update uh, with the main part file. So hope you enjoyed this. Hope you got a couple things out of it. And keep modeling on. This is Steve Darcy with Go Engineer.